You ever wonder if I were here? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? We're all familiar with the typical ghost stories. Faces appearing in mirrors, voices in empty hallways, and lights turning on and off on their own. But for one family in Spain, mysterious faces in their cement flooring led them to question whether or not their house was haunted. Today, we take a look at the creepy case of the Belmez faces. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to Red Web, the show all about the mysterious, unknown world that we live in. Today, we got a paranormal case on our hands, but you know us. We talk about cryptids, true crime, and all sorts of conspiracies. I'm your resident mystery enthusiast, Trevor Collins, joining me hearing this for the very first time with all his questions and gut instinct, Alfredo Diaz. Sounds like a lot of faces. A lot of faces. Also, a floor is lava type situation. Right. You don't want to be stepping on these kissy lips, right? Well, you just don't know. Like, these faces are appearing, like, are they, like pushing out from under the ground like some type Ooh. of like disneyland well, well i don't know what kind of disneyland you've gone to but I'm, I'm very <laughs> interested i don't know maybe disneyland has some like haunted mansion of mickey's horrors or well, something it does have and, the ride to be fair i i but i'm not thinking the whole place is haunted sticking out of the walls or i'm there's been a ton of movies where they do that too as well yeah but yeah i mean I, my instant reaction is to stomp the hell out of it Really? What oh, you, yeah. Uh, a face coming out the ground. I'm stomping it. And if it's like a relative, I'm like, I don't know why you jumping up here, great grandma. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'd be, ter- I'd be, I'd be ter- like, if I saw one, I'd be terrified to touch the ground, period. Yeah. Because I, I, my mind would race to these crazy thoughts of what if I just get sucked through the ground or something. Right. Some Jumanji style stuff. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing this case is really fascinating because it's a lot of storytelling, it's a lot of anecdotal evidence. As always, There's some holes in the plot because it is old. It has been passed down by uh, he said, she said type of story. So a lot of this could be considered hearsay. A lot of the information can be hard to find, but there's a lot of really fascinating details on this one. And and then people started to get hands on with it. That tangibility that I know. Oh, I would be interested to what does that even mean? Well, we got photos of the faces for sure. And I can't wait to show those to you. What? Oh, yeah, we got it all. I mean, at that point, I'm thinking what tangible means is you're ripping up the tiles or the mm-hmm. wood on the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're on the right track. So let's talk about the discovery of the faces. We'll start moving into some of the studies, what people were finding. And then, of course, as always, we'll wrap up with theories attempting to answer what might have caused these mysterious faces. This story takes place in the city of Belmez de la Moraleda in Andalusia, Spain, or simply Belmez. In this city, on August 23rd, 1971, Maria Gomez Camara Pereira found a strange stain on the cement floor of her kitchen. Initially, nothing appeared out of the ordinary, but upon closer inspection, Maria believed the stain to have an uncanny appearance. To her, it looked like a haunting, distorted face. Despite her many attempts to scrub the stain off the floor, the face remained, and by some accounts, only became more clearly defined. Her husband, Juan Pereira, and son, Miguel, destroyed the face with a pickaxe and replaced the concrete floor. To their surprise, only a short time later on September 8th, the same face returned in a new flooring, but this time accompanied by others. So Fredo, before I continue, I want to show you Dang, that's terrifying. some of these faces. Oh, like these are like face faces. Like So this one's the original. Right. That's but a straight up face. There a, is, there's no misconception. There's no like, I'm looking at the clouds in the sky. I there's, interpret right, right. A, a there's no plane here. Test no, here. that's like, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, what smart artist came in and started drawing faces? We in call my them cement? smartest. Yeah, smartest. Okay, yeah. What smartest mm-hmm. came in? And then there's just like a whole group. Right. It's like gaggle of faces. A gaggle of a gaggle of faces. Also, that, mm-hmm. a group of ghosts. I, it's pretty. Uh, look awesome for them to just be like look we're gonna go ahead and chip away the cement yeah yeah yeah. get it out of there and then patch it patch it back Mm -hmm. in but then more pop up that's terrifying because then it's like well if i just it's like a hydra exactly if i destroy these three heads do six pop up like (laughs) right am i making the situation worse here i want to you know what i want to leave these in front of you i wouldn't be able to live with that just being in my house right so now we just at the top of the show but now that you've seen the faces we come back to the idea of 
You stomping on it? You playing Floor is Lava and staying out of there? What What would you do if these honestly very vivid face-looking faces showed up on your floor? I'll be honest, if I stumbled upon it, mm -hmm. I, I would like in a panic just stomp on it, mm -hmm. see if anything happens, and then never touch it again. And then Floor is Lava, the situation. Yeah. I'm thinking Bleach. And then from a distance, maybe like outside the door, uh -huh. watch my husband's son like chip away at this thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be some type of pharaoh tomb right? mummy effect. I have you pictured I mean? the exact scene. The, the compressed acid. Right. Yeah. Psh, da -da! Watching <laughs> my family melt away. Oh my God. But, <laughs> but I luckily avoided it. Luckily. And so I saw the house. Yeah. You get to live with those memories. For luckily. many, <laughs> for many, I don't know, pestles or something. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. That's more myth. Well, we're in Spain. Uh, is, is it? What is it? I don't know what it is. Uh, nowadays, uh, Euro. It's then a days, I'm too ignorant. I don't know. I don't Enchiladas. I don't know. <laughs> but I like, I, I sell that and move on. All right. So coming back to it, husband and son, they hack that face out of there. A month later, not even a month later, just a few weeks, the face comes back in the exact same spot. Now, it wasn't until November 2nd that the face was once again hacked out of the concrete flooring. Around this time, the mayor of Belmez actually became aware of the face and forbade its destruction instead asking to have it kept for study. Mm, I'll allow it. you allow it? Okay. I mean, if you're getting involved and you're going to send the experts or mm -hmm. what you assume would, I don't know, there's no expert in concrete floor faces, you know what I mean? But like, you'd send scientists. Right. Send a couple scientists, probably some paranormal investigators. Right. Get a wide swath. A priest. Priest. Especially like during those times. Mm-hmm. I mean. And maybe a photographer. True. Take a look at like what's going on here. I yeah. don't, you know, because or a I mean, like, what else can we do as a family? We chipped away the cement; it was gone. We refilled the cement, mm -hmm. smoothed it out. The face is back. My I instinct. Mean, like, I mean, I've had stains on my concrete floor before mm -hmm. in my garage. Anyway, my instinct: call a plumber, inspect. Do you think there's like I don't know, like water residue coming out, making a face? It's possible. We'll put a pin in it. We'll come back. It's a very accurate face. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is that is a. If that's a leak, that's coming out very faceward. Right. Like, you know, maybe there's a latent Hollywood, you know, kind of imprint of instead of the hands, the face. True. I don't know. Anyway, this face, the original one, was known later as La Pava. And eventually, La Pava was embedded into the wall of the house itself for display purposes. So, yeah, they chipped the recurring face back up out of it. Didn't destroy it because the mayor wanted to study it. And so they hung it up on the wall in the kitchen instead. Okay, now you're... Uh, the abusing the fact that I let you run experiments in my house. Right, or it starts to, you know, it starts to tease one of the theories or one of the ideas like, is this becoming a museum of some kind? Is this a money-making scheme? Is You know, right? It starts oh, to open up your mind goodness. to different paths that That's this could true. go. Now, over the following year, the Pereira family claimed to have seen a new face on the average of about once per month. And as the story goes, these faces kept showing up in the house with unknown frequency for 30 years, the police were reportedly involved in investigating the faces, which certainly contributed to the rumors and intrigue that were flying around town. What we do know is that the investigations entailed taking samples of the concrete to study, but beyond that, very little is known about the investigation and the results of the police's sample studies. We're going to talk a little bit later about studies performed by paranormal experts. That's just in a few moments here. But as far as the official police ones, it's kind of a dead end. We don't know. I, my mind would race to, was there a previous battle on this field? Ooh. Was there a village of people that were attacked and killed? And, I love this man's and, gut I, instinct, I don't Christian. Know the spirits in the ground and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just never know. I would uh, have a priest come and just dump holy water on the damn thing. Right. I'd salt. The, I'd salt salt the, water and sage. around the face. Yeah, sage the hell mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Like uh, anything I could. Anything to season this house. Yeah, but I mean, 30 years. I would say after, how long would it take for you to feel comfortable? Honestly, feel like it is what it is. I bet it would be surprisingly quick. Yeah. Honestly, I Same. feel like after a month, you're kind of like, this is the new normal. I just, it's just, yeah, oddly enough, it becomes normal. Especially if nothing else is happening. Yep. You know, nothing, other, yep. no other paranormal thing is going down. It's just faces coming out the, the ground. Right. You know, some like, of the walls. And I guess it is what it is. Right. Yeah. You know, who knows? Maybe it's like you said, maybe grandma's coming back to say hi. I mean, unless they didn't recognize the faces, then there is a really creepy 
kind of yeah. feel to it all. In which case, a nice area rug would warm up that concrete floor. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then I'd peek, you know, see if we got a new visitor, but I, I put in the rug back. <laughs> um, now, over time, like I said, the investigations drew a lot of rumors, drew a lot of interest towards this site. And so over time, many people in Belmez actually heard about these faces and began visiting the Pereira home in order to see them. And, you know, this started to become a worldwide phenomenon. So, some people were said to have traveled internationally just to come see this site. And a lot of people, we're, you know, we're going to get into the theories, but a lot of people, I think, were putting their own meaning into this, whether it be religious or otherwise. It's kind of like one of those sites of interest, right? Now, on December 2nd, when the floor was excavated during examination, skeletons were found buried beneath the home. So there we go. Put that another point in the Ooh. psychic column of the gut instinct for Fredo. That, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That, I think, would give me the most pause as the homeowner. It's the face is like, I, I guess I can get it. But if I knew that skeletons were found under the house, I'd start to feel a little odd about that. I think it's a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. If it was faces, I guess it's really weird and far out, but I guess it's the new norm. If it was just skeletons, I went, great, no one told me or like whoever mm -hmm. sold me the house, like didn't divulge that information. It's the combination of the two. I go, oh, these are restless spirit. Yeah, 100%. Now, as always, we here on Red Web in the task force, you know, we collate all the information on the cases that we discuss. But the following additional details have not been confirmed, but they are worth at least talking about. So these next three details, keep that, you know, the, the grain of salt situation. Now, reportedly, many of the skeletons did not have their skulls. Additionally, it was determined that the house was built on top of an old cemetery. Depending on the source that you listen to, the cemetery's age varies, with some saying that it was built in the late 1800s, with some saying that it dated as far back as the 1300s. Wide range there on on Huge. origin also what is a cemetery doing because it like if it was like okay this was a place that had a lot of skeletons without their skulls mm -hmm. like i don't know some maybe come some kind of weird ritual or insult to the people that were killed there but if it was a cemetery then that was purposeful yeah in the sense of like i mean in the, in the sense of it's like okay we bury the dead here but we take their skulls why that's yeah, I mean, to be fair, it is an unconfirmed report, the, yeah, the skulls yeah. piece. But I mean, if I was to dive deep into yeah. that and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a thing. It is interesting, and it, and this is not an unheard of thing. It's honestly a common trope for movies to say, let's just say that the ghosts come from an ancient burial ground here. Right. But I also do think that there is just like the human element. You lose stuff to time. Some people just don't care, that kind of thing. And they're like, mm -hmm. let's just sell this land, move the headstones, whatever. Ugh. But yeah, either way, we got a cemetery on our hands, potentially. And the final unconfirmed detail being that the bodies were removed from the site and then reburied elsewhere. We don't know for sure if that's happened, or perhaps it only happened at the Pereira house. Because, spoiler alert, other bodies were found beneath nearby houses. Despite the fact that the Pereira house was the only one impacted by the spirits, potentially, or seeing these faces, it was reported that other bodies were found nearby. So... I mean, Interesting. I'm sure one of the rumors is the fact that they try to capitalize on this, but who wouldn't? Well, I, I mean, who wouldn't for sure, but also it's just so strange. It's very strange. It's just too in your face to not say something. Yeah. You have all these stains coming up that look like someone drew a face. But if like it's just faces that are popping up and you have this story, mh mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, just start charging people. Yeah, just what take it, is, what it is, you know, it just no, falls to your lap. I'll take the free entry. I'll just look from the doorway. Yeah. Ooh. But yeah, I'm, I'm still thrown by, okay, now, reportedly, this cemetery spans beyond their property limit into others, but they're the only ones impacted. That, I think, could give me some pause for cynicism, right? Are there some other motives in play yet to be determined? But I mean, if you think about it, it could just be one individual, right? Could be, absolutely. It, it could be one restless spirit that's just kicking up all the other spirits all right. around. Like, you, you don't know. They it call him the night painter. Right. He comes and, out and in the just, wee hours and he just, starts scrawling on the floors. Yeah. Like I, mean, I did totally, with crayons. It totally could be. It yeah, totally I mean, could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it's worth noting that we don't know exactly when or why these other homes were excavated in order to find these bodies. Again, a lot of loose details on this particular topic. Now... As indicated earlier, these faces continue to change, appear, and disappear up until at least the early 2000s. Now, we haven't talked about the faces changing as much, but what I mean by that is that sometimes the faces would appear, 
and then lighten or darken back and forth, almost like a picture developing. And so that's what I mean when I say changing. Well, they wouldn't say, change expressions. They would just change how vivid yeah, they Yeah. You said the early 2000s? Yes. The most recently reported new face would have been in the early 2000s. Damn. Well, this house has been kicking and these faces have been popping up for 30 all odd years. All right. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I didn't think we'd get that close to where we are today. Yeah. It's one of those that just kind of sneaks up on you. And I had lightly heard of this, but it's one of those ones that I'm just so fascinated by their stretch into the modern era. Yeah. I love that. Well, at this point, you just have, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but like, go at this thing again with updated technology. Mm hmm And also, take a ton of photos. Absolutely. Photos, time lapses, yeah, all sorts of stuff. all of it. Yeah. And I mean, we're about to talk about some of the studies, and they did try to do those things, and we'll get in there. We'll get love in it, there. Love but, it. But before we do, I have one last kind of piece here, and it's that by April of 1972, this is just a few, maybe six months later, hundreds of visitors from all over the world had come to see what had become to be known as the Belmez Faces, or the Faces of Belmez. As far as we can tell, spectators continue to visit the home to this day. Now, let's talk about some of those studies. Reports spread to paranormal investigator Armand de Argumosa, who began a parapsychological investigation on the Belmez Faces. Argumosa, we're going to hear a lot about this person, by the way, they attempted to record EVPs. We've talked about those a lot here on the show, but those are electronic voice phenomenon. Attempts to capture sound bites or voices from those who have passed, from paranormal entities. And he did that there at the Pereira home. He also claimed that he photographed ectoplasmic phenomenon, which is not something you hear about often. No. Some so goop. Talking about goop seeping from the floor, because that's a new development. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, the local newspaper Pueblo did their own investigation and published their findings on February 25th, 1972, about six months after the initial appearance of the faces, claiming that the mystery had been solved. They wrote that the faces were created with silver chloride, silver, chlorine, and ultraviolet light. Though, according to parapsychological researcher Gerard Mayer, this article was published due to the pressure instilled upon them by the Spanish government in order to prevent further stress due to these faces. Basically, the government stepping in and say, hey, report on this, but report on it as solved with this pragmatic solution. Yeah, we need a solution stat. But I mean, it just, I don't get it. Was it like rattling the town or something? Like, I think, I think you know, people started to get a little excited about it in some ways positive, in some ways mm -hmm. negative. Just a little stressed by the fact that why are all these very vivid faces yeah. showing up in this one house where we know skeletons are? You, you know what I would do? What would you do? I would take everyone that wants to investigate, right? The journalist, the inve like paranormal investigator, the church, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. government. Take all of them. Let them do maybe like a, a couple days and, and nights of investigation. Some lock-ins? And, and yeah, and by themselves. Yeah. And then as much as I can control this, ideally not have them communicate with each other. Then Ooh. we all come to the table. Mm -hmm. What did you find? What did you find? Yes. What did you find? Yes. You know what I mean? If they're all like ectoplasm, I'm like, okay, I don't know. It must be ectoplasm right? because yep. you guys are just, not all of you guys are making this stuff up together, right? right? Like that would be a cool way to kind of bring some truth to their investigation. It's a great way to do that. Yeah. Because people have their own agenda. They have their mm -hmm. own, I mean, Parapsychological researcher Gerard Mayer is the one saying that the pragmatic solution from the government was no, no, no. That was a forced answer to calm people down. So even that could be seen as having an agenda. Yeah. Right. So later, German parapsychologist Hans Bender traveled to Belmez to join Argumosa in his investigation. This is going to become a bit of a dynamic duo for the studies yet to come. In October of 1972, Bender and Argumosa sealed the rest of the floor with plexiglass and pointed a security camera at the covered floor. They wanted to see what would happen to the faces without any human interference, which I think is very smart. That is a really cool way to investigate. Mm -hmm. Basically, that plexiglass will prevent anyone from tampering. Mm -hmm. Security camera always on. Now, unfortunately, this experiment failed once, and they came back, but it failed due to water building up under the glass, which, remember that pin I wanted to have earlier, Oh. starts to raise some other flags in my mind on the uh, the leak kind of thing. On a second attempt to seal the floor in October of 1972, Bender and Argumosa were able to safely seal the floor but had to end the project after about a month due to, once again, the arrival of water. 
It is said that new faces appeared around this time, however, photos could not be obtained either because the film was unexposed or that the developing solution simply didn't work. So for whatever reason, the photos they took came out completely blank. Now, the water that's forming under the, the plexiglass, is it condensation or is it actually just like liquid that's forming that's a very good question i don't know if we if we have any deets on that that's so deep dive i i doubt there's an answer for Mm -hmm. it but i mean like that's where my mind's thinking is it just condensation i mean either way moisture consistently in play says that i mean again the faces look very face-like and there's some busts you see some like decletage right you see the, the shoulders a little bit on some I mean, it's it's not a human eye looking for patterns as we are wont to do. These are many faces. No, these are straight up faces. Yeah, like so portrait s. It's hard to reconcile the arrival of water, which like okay, sure that could create a leak that could cause a, a shape, but like I don't know. It's it is interesting that water showed up twice now. The other thing that's interesting is that the floor was unsealed on this second experiment before a notary could arrive. The idea was they wanted to have a neutral party, a notary to be there on site to confirm certain sightings to make sure that this was above board as possible. I like the attempt. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, except they unsealed before he got there. So Damn. it allows room for mischievous play. I don't, you know, I don't know. Bender attempted this experiment yet a third time, this time a whole year later in September of 1973, this time with a German television show. While there were some changes after three months and the arrival of a new face, Again, the photos that were taken were not good enough quality in order to be decisive. The crew's footage never aired since the experiment was ended early. And according to German newspaper Mittelbayerische Zeitung, quote, no evidence of the supernatural was produced. Interesting. Bender and Argumosa never gave up, right? They continued on with their studies, but they also never officially published their findings, though they did write about the Belmez faces briefly over the years and Bender actually spoke out about it in one of his lectures. From what we could gather, the reason that Bender did not publish his findings is due to the lack of confidence in the study, among other personal reasons in his personal life. He also wished to have captured the faces changing on video, but did not have the technology himself. Yeah, that time lapse we would want. And while we know this about Bender, we do not know the official reasons for Argumosa's reticence on the subject. Regardless of how his studies ended, Bender called the Belmez faces, quote, without a doubt, the most important paranormal phenomenon in the 20th century, end quote. Ooh. So we have some pretty conflicting yet strong opinions coming out just in his studies alone. I like that there's an investigative team that's just like, oh, we found nothing, Mm -hmm. right? Because you see a lot of ghost shows, they're just like, what's that noise? Oh my goodness. Or like, Mm -hmm. oh, what? Like, they really have things up. Yeah, or even faking things. And like, just know Task Force, because it's been, what, two Octobers now that we've done a Halloween special where we go on site and investigate very spooky places. But just know that if we ever feel like we found something, it's because we found something. We start screaming and flailing our arms and running out. If if we are terrified, if, if like we say that we saw something and without a doubt it wasn't light or play, just know that we saw something. Yeah. <laughs> I really do, appreciate do you, it. Huh? Dink. Oh. That if we were to see something, like I feel like, say we we went this October and we yes. found something, we're like we have found it. Yeah, I think that would call for a very serious discussion between the team. Yeah, I think so. Because one, obviously, we want to put it out there. Two, what does that mean for us mm. and like in the world? And and no, I'm talking about like, what would the would the church be upset? Would the government be upset? Like. Would we be tracked more than we probably are now? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what like serious repercussions of that does that have? Are Maybe, there other uh, like forces at play that would right. want to like contain something, con- contain like it, truth, or, or at that point try to go after our name and nature and everything? Mm. Like, that would be something we'd have to discuss. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But like, in, you know, we'd be like, oh my God, we got it. We found it. But then it's like, wait, like, is this going to blow up in our faces somehow? right like to contain the truth we need to attack their credibility right even though that is something valid right i don't know i don't know that's something like you know 
think that you have to think about, but you do. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, that's why I like how we go about it. We go in, we feel things, hear things, see things, whatever. We always try to debunk. And then and then at the end of the day, there's going to be a few things that we couldn't debunk. And then Task Force comes through. They try to catch some evidence on tape and stuff. Yeah, we but did I love, that. We I did love that. that workflow. Yeah, I, I do. I do like that because it was a great way to get the Task Force involved, right? Mm -hmm. The last time we, we did the Ghost Hunt, we uploaded it. A bunch of time codes. Yep. Which was awesome because case we didn't, we didn't catch it. anything about that. We did a case files episode. We we're trying to debunk stuff. And then Cameron was in there going like, well, it's the it's the lens and the lighting. And then it's like, okay, cool. But it's it's cool to like get involved with the audience and be mm -hmm. like, I saw this. And oh, it's yeah. like, ooh. And never coming with an agenda either. Yeah. Other Everyone's than just pointing like, out just like, hey, I saw this. We should yeah. talk. You guys should talk about it. It's like, oh, we should. Oh, yeah. I love that. Just to jump in before you move on to speak to the question about the source of the water. Not finding anything concrete, I'll just read this quote that you can take as is. Uh, it said this was for the uh, the first time that they used the plexiglass or the, the plastic sheet, whatever you want to call it. It just said the plastic sheet had to be removed due to heavy accumulation of condensed water. So condensation, perhaps. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, even in a human environment, you're just right. going to have that. I yeah. mean, well, people, that's my mind when, people uh, line their like crawl spaces with that stuff for that exact purpose. All right, now taking you back in time a little bit. In the summer of 1972, Argumosa paid half the cost to have another room in the house converted into a kitchen so that he could continue to investigate these faces without disrupting the family. Basically saying, hey, I want to hang in this kitchen. I can't be in your way. Why don't I help convert this room down here into another kitchen? You can continue having your eats and I can continue having my, my faces. Wild. Mm-hmm. That's, but I mean, I guess go for it. I don't, I, I, right? I mean, if you're paying for it, yeah. it's unfortunate because who needs two kitchens? Right. <laughs> and this is bedroom three. Why is there a kitchen in it? Right. It's <laughs> like, Long story short. It's like, hey, I want to expand the house and add a bedroom so that way I could investigate this bedroom. Yeah. It's like, cool, awesome, free bedroom. But like, I don't need <laughs> two kitchens. Right. Now, one thing I do want to say, it's also been reported that this took place in 1973, not in 1972. There's conflicting information out there. Regardless, though, hilariously, at least in my opinion, the faces followed the family into their new kitchen. So this man's saying, I need to study in this kitchen. Let me get you a new one. The family goes, fair enough. They start using the new kitchen. The faces start showing up in the new kitchen. So the faces start following the family. Okay, like real talk, though. Yeah. Like, that sounds like a joke. Build a third kitchen. <laughs> no. I'm serious. I'm serious. I need to. This man. Okay, listen. No, 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 no. We've you normalized. Build. We've normalized remodeling, deconstructing, and remodeling again here right. at the task force. They were just ahead of the curve. Oh, okay. So, so they did it first. They yeah. they walked so we could run. Exactly. And this third is why kitchen. Why are all of your bedrooms apartments? I'm. Build a third kitchen. Stop. I'm serious, Christian. You build a third kitchen, I'm and then you, you put the mom in there first. Right. Oh, see who it's attached to? Yeah. Then you just put the I son, then just the dad, and then combination. Right. Frey, see, see listen, up. I chuckle because... I know. I think it's a good... No, because, no, no, no. no. Yeah. I chuckle because that sounds like a good idea. Christian chuckles because he's flippant. This, right, this right. is the scientific method. That's what Christian. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm glad you know me at least. <laughs> that, I mean, honestly, third kitchen. I love that move. <laughs> now, several years later, in September of 1981, investigator Jose Martinez Romero visited the house and theorized that the faces corresponded with Maria's mental state. Very, very interesting, especially oh. since you just mentioned a third kitchen and putting <laughs> yep. the mom in there because it does seem very attached to her. He, Romero, believed that when Maria was feeling unwell, the images would actually become a little bit more faint in color, and also vice versa. When her spirits were high, the images would become a lot darker, a lot more detailed. Is the, is the, the face is sucking the energy out of her? I don't know, but it does play into one of the theories that we'll talk about. But he basically proposed from this that when Maria died, hypothetically, these images might disappear permanently. That's I, a good theory, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Definitely testable. Sections of the floor were sent to the Instituto de Ceramica y Vidrio, the Institute of Ceramics and Glass, for a chemical analysis in 1990. It is unclear who facilitated this process, but we will briefly discuss the results of their analysis in the theory section in just a moment. Sadly, though, coming back to Maria and the theory at hand, 
She did in fact pass away on February 3rd, 2004, but nonetheless, the faces continued to appear. One thing that's not in my notes though, and this is just me noticing, is that if the faces continued to appear up until the early 2000s, maybe the faces didn't disappear with her death, but maybe new faces won't continue to develop. Time will tell. Oh. But that is something that's interesting to me. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Because it's been basically another 20 years since then. Since or she passed. plot twist it had nothing to do with her the whole time. It had to do with the totally. child. You to know what I mean? Totally like, possible. Yeah. And like like I said, the midnight painter, right? The, the child with a crayon. And it, maybe true. they just know how to draw. A good drawer. I don't know. Hey there, Task Force. It's me, as always, Trevor, talking to you and your gentle, supple little eardrums between uh, the gaps and the mysteries, talking to you about Red Web and what's going on in our sphere. We recently did the live shopping event for the tinfoil hat, which we have about a few dozens of remaining, as well as the evidence box, which has a cool little Mothman shirt, as well as a black light and a pin. The batteries are not included, as always, with electronic devices. It's a tale as old as time. I remember all the toys back in the 90s being really, really cool, but needing about a dozen D-sized batteries. Oh, no, no. These are triple A's. You only need three, and the black light is pretty powerful. It's really nice. But anyway, we have those still in the store. store Store.roosterteeth.com if you want to support the show. Remember, there's only a few left because of the live shopping conspiracy hour shenanigans. Oh, man, we started talking about Skittlegate. You know, uh, we realized that each of the Skittles, at least in America, has one flavor. Everything else is scent. I didn't realize Skittles were a scent-based technology, but here we are in 2023 finding out all the answers. Anyway, protect yourself. We got that tinfoil lined hat and the evidence box. Really cool stuff. And if you're feeling like traveling for this summer and want to come down to Austin, Texas, Red Web will be at RTX. You can learn all about it at rtxaustin.com. It's July 7th through the 9th. We're going to have a customized escape room partnered with one of the best escape room companies in the country here right at the convention center. It's just across the street. So it's like literally I could throw a wad of paper and hit the building. So it's not all that far. And we're going to try to do other things on the show floor. We're going to have a panel and we would love to see all of you whenever you have free time, whenever we have free time, we're going to be walking around the floor, taking photos and signing things too. So if you love what we do here with Red Web and you got some time, come hang out with us at RTX here in Austin, Texas, again, this July 7th through the 9th. And with that, let's talk about today's fantastic sponsors. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by BetterHelp. Finding the right balance between meeting the needs of others and taking care of ourselves can be quite tough. It's not always easy to know how much to give others while also making sure that you're looking out for your own well-being and setting a healthy boundary for yourself can also be difficult to manage. That's where BetterHelp can step in and make things a little easier. When you spend all your time giving, it can leave you feeling a little stretched and potentially burned out, and therapy is there as a tool to help you find balance in your life, so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great option that's easy and accessible. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient and flexible. And they'll work with your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can always switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Finding the right therapist is incredibly important and they take that seriously, which I personally really appreciate. I also enjoy how easy the questionnaire is and how pointed it is. It tries to get to the center and the crux of what you need out of therapy so that way they can make sure that you have a leg up. I I really appreciate them having that quiz on their website because it's a nice entryway to therapy, again, which is an important tool. Find more balance with BetterHelp by visiting betterhelp.com slash redweb today in order to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash redweb for 10% off your first month. This episode of Red Web is also sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Thanks to Honey, finding the perfect online coupon code just got way easier. Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies them to your cart, saving you so much time. When you check out online, the Honey button appears and all you've got to do is click apply coupons. Then all you have to do is wait a few seconds while Honey tries every single code that it has in its database on that website. And if Honey finds a code working for you, it picks the best one and boom, 
you save. Every single time I go shopping online, I make sure I have my Honey extension available on my web browser so I can always get those coupons. I remember the old days of trying to scour scam-ridden websites and pop-ups and ads, trying to make sure that I could save just a few pence. But uh, Honey makes that so much easier. You don't have to worry about going to any other websites. It's just a button. You click it and boom, you can save. And Honey is also available on your iPhone too. So no matter where you're shopping, you can bring the savings with you. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and you can save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid as well as supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free by going to joinhoney.com slash redweb. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash redweb and get that free savings tool. This episode is also sponsored by Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglass company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. They got durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. Plus, Shady Rays has the wildest protection plan. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. Every pair. So if you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they've got your back long after your purchase. And if you don't love your pair of Shady Rays, exchange for a brand new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. You know I've talked about Shady Rays before, but I'll do it again because I really enjoy their sunglasses. They have so many different styles, no matter what your style, flavor, or aesthetic is, however you want to say it, they've got a little bit for every different outfit that you might have. And you know, Task Force, I'm a sucker for polarized lenses, and they have it in every pair. Exclusively for Task Force members, Shady Ray is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use promo code REDWEB for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. ShadyRays.com, promo code REDWEB. And with that said, let's dive right back into the mystery. So let's talk about some of the theories. But before we do, I like to do this periodically, is open it up to you, Fredo. We've talked about a few details here talked about some stories, some of the studies. What comes to mind for you? What feels like the right direction? Do you think this is a paranormal situation? Do you think that there's a more practical answer going on? What what stands out? I don't think this is any type of coincidence. It's either this is something that's paranormal or straight up someone is a little artiste in the night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there is no, it's the perfect mix of this and that. I'm a skeptic, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in my, in my head, it's just, it's just, there's no way. Yeah, I get that. I need, I need that proof, right? Right. I, I need, I need like the video footage or the time lapse and it's like the face showing up. Even then there has been very, there's been a couple episodes where it's just like, oh, boom, there it is. Mm-hmm. There's, there's the proof and you just go, ah, is it? But is like, it good enough for me? Is it good enough? Yeah, the goalpost move. So it's like, when is it good enough? Yeah. But with that said, let's talk about the first theory. Because as you're kind of indicating yourself personally, despite much skepticism in the community, many people believe that the Belmez faces originated from paranormal causes. That does seem to be the loudest and most forefront of the theories. So, of course, something we want to talk about. Though, admittedly, it's hotly debated. After Bender and Argumosa sealed the floor, Bender said in a lecture regarding his final test, he said this, quote, In Belmez, slight changes of the face's configuration during the period when the phenomenon was under seal, attested by a notary, have contributed to ensure its paranormal origin. All that is to say is, we seal it up so no one could tamper with it, and we saw shifts in the faces. And those shifts, to him, indicate a firm paranormal origin at hand. I mean, I would think so as well. But I also think it just means that whatever's happening is coming from below. Just because it's not humans doesn't mean it has to be paranormal, right? It's such a detailed face. It is a detailed face. It really, really is. And it not just the one. So some believe that the faces were from spirits that were buried beneath the house, which makes a lot of sense given the discovery of the cemetery underneath. And as previously mentioned, Argumosa and Romero believed that Maria was the cause of the faces and not necessarily the spirits. Thoughtography is a paranormal concept where one is able to burn images into objects with their mind. 
This is the first time I've ever heard of this. Same. But basically, you are able to imprint an object, in this case, stone or concrete, but something traditionally speaking would be like photographic film. Like, can you develop a photographic film with your mind? That's something that people have attempted to do and seem to have done with proof before. It, oh, no that's a totally clue. different subject right. for this podcast. I had no clue that that was even a thing. If there's enough there, Christian, maybe we do a, an episode on it. But that's that's interesting. I do know there's a man who tried to see people's dreams by developing photographs. And I think he's also tried to see the future with that. But that person was proven to be a hoax. So I've heard lightly of things of this ilk, but not this in particular. Anyway, Maria may have been creating these faces subconsciously as the theory goes on. At the time of the discovery, on the first face, Maria actually felt ill. And so maybe they're thinking it has something something to do with just her status at that time, just being in a certain health situation. They believe that the changes in the Belmez faces reflect how Maria was feeling, as I mentioned earlier, but the faces continued even after her passing. So it does call that into question a bit. Some have called the Belmez faces a permanent paranormal object, or a PPO. Psychologist John Beloff theorized that PPOs are physical objects that could be studied and measured at any time, but have no explanations beyond the paranormal. This could explain why the faces continued to appear even after the bodies were removed, or even after Maria passed away, that it was just a permanent a fixture, that it had already happened and was going to continue happening. I know it's like from the subconscious, but you usually... Things are usually drawn from what we know and what we've experienced. So I'm also surprised that with all of these faces, there's a plethora of faces that pop up. And she's not like, I know that face. Right. You know? That's a good point. I, I'm surprised nobody has seen their family in there. Yeah. Or or a loved one or a religious icon. Right. Like that is an, a frequent thing with seeing faces in rare places or unexpected places is that whether it's projection or otherwise, people mm -hmm. see religious figures as a common thing. Or like yeah. you said, family. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that has any sort of sway on what could be theorized here. Maybe, I don't know, I'm spitballing now. But maybe it's like, oh, by seeing someone you recognize in there, does that draw more possibility on you being the culprit? On this being a scam? Mm -hmm. What would you think? Like, Oh, God. You could sway it either way, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. You that's know, true. it really depends on like if you're leaning more of a skeptic or believer. Mm hmm Yeah. Moving on from the paranormal theory and more into a tangible true crime angle, but still in the realm of paranormal, we find ourselves asking the question of who were the bodies buried underneath the house? How long had they been there? What is the true origin of this cemetery or otherwise this burial ground? And through Argumosa's research, he found several historic documents reporting that a 17th century governor of Granada had murdered five members of a local family. The murder site was unclear, but it was believed to have taken place near or inside the location of the Pereira house. A potential wrinkle in this, as we mentioned earlier, bodies were supposedly found beneath nearby houses as well, which begs the question of why the Pereiras in particular, and why were they the only ones experiencing this? Well, restless spirits, right? That they have a reason to, I don't know. They wanted like to haunt big the, emotion, the spot. A big emotional moment. Yeah. I could see that being a reason. Like like they're haunting the, 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 the site of their murder mm -hmm. rather than their burial yeah. ground. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a stain on the on the, the land. True. In fact, we were actually, I was just talking with Jillian briefly offline before recording this. And there's a theory we've talked about with no name many times on this show, and it actually does have a name. It's called the stone tape theory, and that it's that traumatic, high energy, high mm -hmm. emotional events from human experiences can imprint on nearby objects. In this case, or as the namesake is, on stone as a kind of tape, as a kind of record, a record of the past. And so kind of what you're saying, I mean, this goes back to the paranormal side of things. Maybe it was that this murder did take place on or nearby this site. And right. that the emotion just, as you said, stained this area. I mean, love you, that idea. You're not just, I don't know, like paranormal or not, just maybe because I've watched too many shows and movies, I just don't feel like some, like a grandfather dying of old age, surrounded by generations of family, happy in his bed, is gonna like imprint on the land. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? It's, Let me see I what's up in this kitchen. <laughs> right. You know? I just, 
I just don't see it happening. Yeah. It, it's like if you yeah, have a family was murdered, then there's a lot of like you're possibly having family members witness other family members dying in front of them. And then there's nothing they can do about it. That's high stress, high emotion. And then that could resonate if mm -hmm. paranormal was real. Very true. Now let's move on to our last theory. It's got some juicy details in it, but it's the idea of it being a hoax. I mean, of course, if it's not paranormal, right. that is the next most likely theory that people subscribe to is that this was some sort of hoax. Because many people are skeptical about the possibility of faces just simply appearing in a cement floor. And they, they believe that this phenomenon must have been a hoax orchestrated by the family to some end, for whatever purpose. It is believed that the family might have used some kind of paint or chemical to create these faces in a way that would draw attention to the house and perhaps even profit off the house by, as you said, t a ticket. Have people come in, have people see it, whatever way did to they, monetize. Did they do that? Did they monetize? Did, that's a, that is a good question. They had people, like people did come. Did they monetize? Not from what we could find. Okay. It was just more of like the publicity of it was yeah. spread, but we didn't see anything that suggested they monetized this mm. in any way. So then maybe it's just the idea of spreading a curiosity. Like, just like what is the point then? You I know don't know. What I mean? Maybe like, what's the point of a book, right? Maybe it's just some some level of entertainment, whether it be fiction or nonfiction to them. I I don't know. Yeah, true. Or, or they want to pure entertainment to themselves. I that guess. or it's like the boy that was supposedly lost in the weather balloon and you just oh, yeah. you just want attention from the news for whatever Ooh. reason. But I don't know. The Institute of Ceramics that we referenced earlier claimed that there was no paint whatsoever after their investigation in 1990. It's worth mentioning that we don't know which faces they tested. However, we do have some chemical analysis on two samples breaking down what is in them. And both samples are different, but the common elements seen in them are zinc, barium, copper, chromium, phosphorus, and lead. However, in 1993, Luis Ruiz Noguez published an article in the Journal of the Society for Psychical Research showing that the presence of zinc, chromium, and lead in the Institute of Ceramics Research could actually prove that paint was present in the concrete since these chemicals are found in paints. So you have one chemical study done with two conclusions. People who did it saying, no, nah, there's no paint. And then the other guy saying, well, all those elements are in paint, so why not? Maybe it's a rudimentary version of it. Mm. What you thinking? I mean, if the floor is painted, I'd be like, well, the floor is painted. I guess concrete doesn't have those elements in combination. And then, I mean, lead? Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem like it was sketched with like pencil or anything like that. Yeah. Well, there's lead based paints, but it, what's worth mentioning here is that zinc is the most common element out of all I listed. Based on looking at sample A and B, it's got way more zinc, and then lead would be the next most common in sample A. Whereas sample B, zinc, once again, was the most common, with phosphorus being the secondary. So I'd be interested to just whip those chemicals together. Yeah. See if you can actually. If you can do something. Create with an it. image with it. Man, yeah. that's a case file is waiting to happen. I like oh, that. That's, yeah. We get tangible. But, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of draws back to the to the idea that they scrubbed the floors and it wouldn't come off. But is that a trust thing? Or did anybody else try to like, we preserved them. I think we got enough faces. Try it. 100%. Just take, yep. I was thinking the same thing. Take a magic eraser to one of these things. Yeah. And just see what's up. Look, this is a half developed face. We're just going to go ahead and scrub the right, rest Right, right, right. This, yeah. this is the worst one. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see if we can like. Which one's your least favorite? If the paint will come take off. Take that one out. <laughs> All right. So in 1971, the vice president of the Spanish Society of Parapsychology, Jose Luis Jordan, was asked by Spanish Ministry of the Interior to investigate the faces. So Jordan was already a skeptic. He found that there was, quote, a mixture of soot and vinegar on the floor, which may have been how the Pereira family created the faces. Though some have argued that many kitchens would have these very same substances on the floor, whether it be for cooking or an accident or what have you. He said in an interview with the Spanish Society of Parapsychology that, quote, with regard to the enigma of the chemical procedure, I solved it by discovering that this compound can be found in any drugstore by asking for a German product to remove concrete stains. The mystery that the images were invisible and latent for some time is thereby solved. Mm. I feel like we're spinning our wheels in the mud here. Yeah. 
But you could just kind of go either way. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I mean, these chemicals are present in this combination to create, I don't know, yeah. ink or paint or whatever, but it's also commonly found and it's too, the chemicals are too broadly used. Right. Right. And so it's getting us nowhere. Although I do like how they investigated it. I like the process. It's thorough. And yeah. that's what we need. But it does get confusing with common elements. And I do like this, this kind of like subtle nod here that some people did theorize that perhaps the faces were already there in some way and that some chemical kind of developed them, right? Like invisible oh. ink. That's kind of what he's addressing by saying they were invisible and latent for some time. But he also refers to having a German product to remove concrete stains. That could have been from the family trying to wash these up. Things just get really conflated here. Yeah. It's a lot of back and forth. We're just yeah. spinning our tires now. Mm-hmm. But to kind of close this out, once again, Maria Gomez Camara Pereira passed away in 2004, but the strange stains, maybe now even more distorted, are still there. Though some claim her son, Miguel, may have been making the faces and continued making them after her death. And so there you have the Belmez faces or the faces of Belmez. Now that we've heard the theories, where's your mind at? I think that Maybe it's, you know, I kind of like the invisible ink type of thing. Maybe there was a mixture of these chemicals that drew the faces and then just over time they kind of pop up. Possible. Right? I don't because no one's watching 24 7. So there could be a way where it's just kind of like, okay, I draw it like invisible ink. Eventually, over time, it'll rise up, pop up. That could explain the fading in and out. Yeah. It really could if it was like a temporary ink yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then like, oh no, it's starting to fade. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me come back in the night and smear some vinegar on this and it'll get dark again. Yep. And then they go, oh, it's getting darker. Oh, Maria's feeling better. You know, like right. you start to find other correlations, but I feel like for me to even attempt to enter the realm of believing this, mm -hmm. th they would have to be a full blown lockdown. Oh, absolutely. Someone like, else has to be in there. You turn it into like a museum, you lock it down, yeah. you tape it off, you don't touch it, you see what happens. Right. Someone else needs to get in there who is not involved, mm -hmm. set up cameras, cameras on the cameras, cameras on the cameras on the cameras. I mean, yeah. All the way outside the door. Right. And then someone on like, kind of like a, you know, when like in Looney Tunes, someone's got a, a string on a stick with a box and then they're waiting to trap. Yeah. Like that's what they're doing. They got a camera facing the camera and they're just sitting there making sure that nothing gets touched yeah and then they just stare the for 30 minutes 30 days with the fake drives 30 years right yeah and it's like well you wiped my drive it's like well that was the fake drive it's like well i knew you'd have a fake drive so i wiped these drives it's like i knew that you would know that i, I would knew know you about knew, the fake I drive so knew. i set up a second series of fake drives and a backup to the backup to the backup oddly elaborate and they're like <laughs> and i knew you would have that so i hired an intern who would be right behind right. you Right. Every turn. Anyway, that is the faces of Belmez. I think the thing that's most intriguing about this is just how vivid the faces are. And I mean, it's not it's not a unique case of its kind in anything other than how vivid and how recurring these faces yeah. are. I think that's what makes this so fascinating to me. And there's so many dark nooks and crannies that Jillian and Gracie, our research team, kind of uncovered to to deliver this information. So huge shout out to them. But it's fascinating cool that case. it's like there. It yeah. exists even to this day. Would you go? Want to go with me? Head over um, to Spain for the photo ops? chance to go to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's wanna, how we're going to get them in I don't there. Bring something, <laughs> I don't want to bring something back, man. Well, see, that's how we go to the next ghost house and the next haunted house. And mm. we go, hey, what's a nearby attraction? <laughs> There's a Six Flags nearby this haunted hotel. You know? All right. Well, Fredo, that's been the faces of Belmez or the Belmez faces. And with all that said, I will see you right back here this time next week for another mystery. Mystery.